A medical student dislocated his mandible while yawning during the anatomy lecture. Contraction of which muscle is responsible for the active opening of the mouth? Let's start with the first option, masseter. Masseter arises from the zygomatic arch. Its fibers slope obliquely to be inserted into the angle of the mandible. As it might be expected from its attachment, masseter acts to close the jaws by elevating the mandible and thus it does not participate in mouth opening. And the option is wrong. Regarding orbicularis oris, this muscle is a muscle of facial expression. It lies within the lips and it encircles the mouth and provides a sphincteric action. In fact, the muscle closes the lips and more powerfully, it protrudes them as in whistling and kissing. It puckers the lips. So the muscle has no action on the mandible. The opposing dilator mechanism is provided by several muscles fusing with orbicularis oris and radiating away from the mouth like the spokes of a wheel. Some of them are shown here, including the depressor angli oris and depressor labii inferioris. So these again are muscles of facial expression, which are attached to the skin and act as dilators of the mouth, but no action on the mandible. So the third option, depressor angli oris, is also wrong. In fact, the muscles that act on the mandible are called the muscles of mastication. And these are the muscles that are supplied by the trigeminal nerve, mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. They include masseter, temporalis, and medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. Masseter closes the mouth, as we have seen earlier, so as temporalis. So the fourth option, temporalis, is wrong. Temporalis, in fact, the muscle arises from the temporal fossa, as you see in here, and the tendon is attached to the coronoid process of the mandible. Thus, when the muscle contracts, it elevates the mandible, that to say, closes the jaws, while the posterior fibers, as you see in them here, they are more or less horizontal and they can retract the mandible. Opening of the mouth takes place at the temporomandibular joint, and this is a condyloid synovial joint between the head of the mandible on one side and the articular tubercle and mandibular fossa of the temporal bone on the other side. This joint has an intraarticular disc, a fibrocartilaginous disc within the capsule of the joint. When the mouth is opened, the head of the mandible rotates on the intraarticular disc of the temporomandibular joint, like the movement of a hinge joint. But in addition to the simple hinge movement, the disc carrying the head with it moves forwards, that is to say glides, passing over the articular tubercle and thus resulting in more opening of the mouth. So opening of the mouth is either passive and produced by gravity, this is the simple hinge-like movement and it happens when the jaw falls down during sleep, for example. But active opening of the mouth, as in yawning, is mainly produced by an active contraction of a muscle, which is here, the lateral pterygoid muscle. The lateral pterygoid muscle is attached to the neck of the mandible, as well as to the intraarticular disc and the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. Thus the muscle can produce forward gliding of the mandible. Submandibular muscles such as digastric, mylohyoid, and geniohyoid can help in mouth opening, but the lateral pterygoid is the main muscle in this respect. The lateral pterygoid is located in the infratemporal fossa. It has been removed in this dissection, but I will try to reconstruct it. It has two heads, one from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate, which is the inferior head, and a superior head from the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. The fibers of the two heads, they run almost backwards, edge to edge, to be inserted into the neck of the mandible and, as I said, the intraarticular disc of the temporomandibular joint. Thus, when the muscle contracts, it can draw the condyle and the disc forward from the glenoid fossa, and when the mandible is pulled forwards, it slopes on the articular eminence 
and thus the lateral pterygoid muscle is responsible for the active opening of the mouth. Here we can see that medial pterygoid is preserved. Medial pterygoid is the fourth and last of the muscles of mastication that we should mention in here. Most of the medial pterygoid arises from behind the lateral pterygoid. It arises from the medial aspect of the lateral pterygoid plate and from the tubercle of the maxillary bone. Muscle fibers of the medial pterygoid muscle are attached to the inside of the angle of the mandible, just opposite to masseter muscle, which is, which is attached to the outside of the angle of the mandible. The muscle medial pterygoid thus closes the mouth and when acting on one side it moves the mandible to the opposite side that's to say it results in side to side movement which is needed in chewing i will draw the attachment of the other muscles of mastication here the lateral pterygoid is attached to the neck of the mandible the tendon of the lateral pterygoid is attached to the neck of the mandible and of course to the capsule of the of the joint and to the intra-articular disc as well the other muscle in here is the temporalis muscle and the fibers are attached to the coronoid process of the mandible so these are the muscles together with masseter muscle which is attached to the outer surface of the mandible at the region of the neck these are the four muscles of mastication that can move the mandible but it is the lateral pterygoid muscle is the only muscle that is an active opener of the mouth returning back to the lateral pterygoid muscle and its role in yawning it seems that the role of the muscle is not restricted to opening the mouth in yawning but it acts like a peripheral heart there is a pterygoid venous plexus in and around the muscle lateral pterygoid muscle the veins draining into the plexus they correspond with the branches of the maxillary artery you can see the maxillary artery in here but the maxillary vein has been removed so the venous plexus will drain into the maxillary vein that corresponds to the position of the maxillary artery the plexus receives drainage from the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure also it receives drainage from the face through the deep facial vein that communicates between the facial vein and the pterygoid venous plexus the plexus drains into the maxillary vein here and this maxillary vein unites with the superficial temporal vein to form the retromandibular vein the role of the plexus is to act as a peripheral heart aiding venous return by the pumping action of the lateral pterygoid muscle the plexus is valved it sucks blood from the incompressible parts including the face and the orbit and then it pumps it back to the maxillary veins the muscle pumps each time the mouth is actively opened like in yawning eating or talking but not when the mouth drops by gravity like in sleep the prolonged and forcible contraction of the lateral pterygoid to open the mouth in yawning is accompanied by a like contraction of the diaphragm to aid venous return from the abdomen and often also by stretching the limbs to empty them from the stagnant venous blood remember the role of calf muscles acting as a peripheral heart and the lower limb thus yawning is a reflex triggered by venous stagnation and is contagious to those whose veins are likewise stagnant you can compare this reflex with the reflex emptying of a full bladder encouraged by the sound of falling water the empty bladder is not affected 